Hey guys, what's up? I Zach the Tron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next base destruction video. And this one is going to be an interesting one. We have a Town Hall 9 base uh, that's actually a little bit harder to 3 star than you might think just by looking at it. So basically what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to look at a few attacks on it and talk about how identifying what attack to use base identification we call it how that was the difference in uh, getting the three star between the two attackers first though before we get into the action i do want to say regarding the uh, form i had you guys fill out in the last video for the face reveal predictions uh that form i didn't inc include a place to put your name and your email Therefore, pretty much every entry is anonymous. So unfortunately, I, I'm going to make a new form. Actually, I already have. I'll link it in the description below. And you guys can just, uh, sorry for the inconvenience, but you can fill that form out again. It's all the same questions. Um, so I guess you can change your answer if you feel different now. But uh, the only new things are just your name and your your email, which makes it easier for me to uh, pick a winner because now I know uh, you know how to contact whoever had the most correct answers. So sorry about that, sorry for the inconvenience, but uh, the, the link is in the, descri this, the description below to make it easy for you guys to fill out the new form. And I'll talk about that in my next few videos uh, leading up to my celebration videos, which will be this weekend uh, when I have some more time. Uh, so yeah, look forward to those coming out this weekend. Anyway though, for this base, you can see has the giant bombs in the core here, has the Teslas. I don't remember the exact locations. I think there's one here, uh, maybe one here, but they're kind of out in this ring as well. So looking at this base, um, and, and the theme of this video is going to be when not to use Stoned Hobo, because Stoned Hobo is probably the most popular Town Hall 9 attack, but you don't want to use it on certain bases, even though this base is kind of compact, because it is a little bit of a compact base. It's definitely not too spread out, um, which is typically a good thing for Stoned Hobo. The defenses are all kind of spread out in this ring. All that's in the middle are the two expos and the giant bombs, really. And the giant bombs aren't that good for Stone Tobo because they take out bowlers. So really all that's in there are the two expos. And because of that, um, the, the Stone the Stone Tobo kill squad is good for getting in there and getting the uh, that kind of core taken out. But really the shell of the base, that's going to be the job for the hogs. And because there's so much in this outer shell, uh, that's too much for hogs to handle, especially when you can only bring 14 or 12 hogs. So the first attacker tries a Stone Tobo attack. It doesn't work probably because of the reason I described, but also one other mistake that might have also made the difference is he dropped his jump as he came in from this angle. Instead of right here, he drops it over here, which now connects to this compartment down here, and that the golems go to this archer tower. So he loses his tanks, they go off to the side. Because of that, um, this second giant bomb set stays up. So as the hogs move through, they hit it, and they all die. So really, you also want to be able to very easily predict the pathing of your golems and uh, your bowlers. You want them to stay together so you know you're investing 90 troop space in golems. You need to know they're going to tank for you. And uh, he just he does a, a probably a, a bad uh, decision to put the jump spell where he did. Probably should have been right there. Not sure that would have been a three star. Might have been more of a coin, uh, coin flip, but would have had a better chance at least. Uh, that being said, probably wasn't the best attack strategy, but we'll take a look at the attack. Uh, his tech, his technique was pretty good, just probably not the right plan. So let's see what uh, it was. JP, let's see what JP did on this first attack. So here we go with the attack. We have JP going in, and uh, you can see he has the the three golems of his own, which is pretty standard. Um, the funnel was it was solid. The one thing is I don't think this army camp goes down, and he probably planned on it going down, but the baby dragon aggroed a little bit too quickly because we talk about bowler funneling. I did that in my last video, um, a huge video on it. Th that building there and that building there are the second layer buildings you need to take out, probably that builder's hut too, which he does. Um, so these two don't go down, uh, especially this one does go down, but a little delayed. Still, the bowlers do go into the base, which shows you can get a little bit lucky. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but still it's better safe than sorry, so maybe a little better funneling, but it looks like he was doing his best to try to get that taken out. So everything's going fine so far, but that jump spell you can see brings his golems off to the side, so all three of those golems are almost wasted uh, for the second half of the attack. The heal spell does prolong the life of the bowlers, because he did drop a heal on them. I'm not sure if that was planned or not, but either way the bowlers do stay up a little longer, but they start to go down pretty quickly without anything to tank for them. Here come the hogs, you can see 
doesn't have enough hogs to really spread them out too much. Because of that, he has to drop them in kind of a big group because there is a number of point defense in relatively close proximity to each other. So the hogs make their way through, but you can see that double giant bomb set is still up because the bowlers went down. The golems are kind of wasted off to the bottom there. All the hogs blow up. From there, it's pretty much GG. We'll fast forward because uh, there is a little more. The queen is behind all those tanks, so she does an okay job, but I think if nothing else, he runs out of time right here, and his queen also looks like she's about to go down. So nice try to JP, uh, but this wasn't the best plan, not the best base identification. So we'll take a look at, uh, I think it was Fahim who cleaned this up, and what attack strategy he used, which I think was a little more appropriate for this base, and uh, how he got the three stars. So let's take a look at Fahim's plan. Okay, so one thing to look for um, on this base, it's, it's actually a pretty good base to queen walk for a few reasons. Uh, these expos, which are big threats to queen walks, are pretty central, so they're not going to be an issue, especially where Fahim does his queen walk. Also, the air sweepers are pointed inside the base, so they're not going to push anything back. And the point defense isn't grouped up too much. It's pretty spread out uniformly uh, throughout the base. Because of that, all those things, this is a great base to queen walk, even though it is a little bit more compact uh, than other bases, which you would think to queen walk more. So drops down his queen. Uh, the funneling is a little bit sketchy, but she does go the correct way, I believe, as was planned to, to my knowledge. Uh, he drops down a nice Falk here, drops in some wall breakers, opens everything up. So lets his queen take out the, the enemy queen, uh, get this uh, archer tower. Then she walks in. He doesn't have to use her rage, doesn't have to use her ability. Things just go down one at a time. No expos, her honor. Uh, the CC troops go down. She takes those out just with the poisons. And from there, this is a great base for Valks because uh, really there's not a whole lot of clumps of defenses. And that being said, it's compact enough that you can still get great value for your spells. So it's kind of a, the best of both worlds. The queen takes all of this out, which makes it so you can drop the Valks in and they'll funnel off in this direction, taking out defenses, going along methodically. And like I said, there's the defenses are close together enough that um, it, it's a, he gets some pretty good value for his spells because he can drop those and they affect the Valks for a long period of time. But also, they're spread out enough in this shell around the base, like I said, this little ring. They're spread out enough that there's not too many defenses in one spot and he doesn't lose too many Valks at one time. Bowlers also back up the Valks because especially when you have like 20 Valks, or I think he has 17, um, you have enough Valks. Bring Bowlers, they have some more range and uh, they can add another dimension to your attack. So we'll take a look at the plan and uh, see how this base was three-starred. Because one thing I want to say, on these anti-two-star bases, you, you might have an instinct to use hogs, but really these double giant bomb sets can be tricky, even though the pathing isn't that great for the uh, defender. It's not set up that well, but still those can be tricky. So when in doubt, kind of overpower the base, and uh, Valks are a great way to do it against these anti-two-star bases. Valks might be want to be your first instinct if you see a base like this, unless anything else uh, is a sign that you should use something else. So that being said, let's take a look at the attack by Fahim that got the three-star. So here is Fahim's t attack. You can see he has the four healers for his queen. And really, one thing I want to say at, uh, for Town Hall 9, the reason Town Hall 9 queen walks are much easier to do, in my opinion, than Town Hall 10 queen walks is because healers are the same level. So even though your queen has more hit points, she's not being healed anymore because the healers still do the same amount of heal, but there's way more defenses. You have another expo, you have higher level point defense, much higher level point defense if it's a max Town Hall 10, and really that makes it a lot more difficult. Uh, so I think Town Hall 9 queen walks are going to be much more, uh, much more viable and seen much more in these top wars uh, than Town Hall uh, 10 queen walks moving forward. And uh, you can see the funneling on the queen was a little sketchy, but uh, she was barely off to the left side when everything was said and done. So he probably could have dropped her a little farther to the left to begin with, but the funneling was fine. And one great thing he did as that comment rolls through is he dropped a Valk down to get double duty. Not only did it take out a few buildings to make his queen's job easier to keep her, to make sure she funnels into the base, but the Valk also tanked for the wall breakers. So if you can get double duty like that, because that archer tower was out of range of the queen, so the Valk covered for those wall breakers that would have otherwise been taken out by the archer tower. If you can get double value like that, that's awesome. Um, that's what you want to look for. And Valks, I think, are underused for the outside of the base, whether it's taking out defenses or buildings that are touching for a funnel, 
or just tanking because they have quite a few hit points. So I think, you know, look to use Valks when you can for funneling. They are cheaper than a baby dragon, and sometimes they're a better option. So there go the Valks making their way on in. There are the bowlers behind. Uh, because that compartment's sticking out, he can be a little... Uh, I, w I don't want to say sloppier, but he doesn't have to invest as much in the funnel because that compartment is sticking out, like I said in the how to funnel your bowlers into the base video. So check that out if you haven't seen it already. But anyway, the bowlers go into the base. There's the rage, mainly for the bowlers, but it also helps out the Valks a little bit too. You can see the bowlers add that next dimension. They can target some more buildings uh, in that outer ring where most of the defenses lie, but he gets great value for <coughs> his heals, excuse me, and... Um, you see he has one heal left to swag because the Valks are still healthy, has probably two-thirds of his Valks still left up. The Queen, this was an amazing Queen walk, by the way. I mean, the value he got for her, you can see, didn't use the ability yet, hasn't used a single spell on her, but she's made her way through the entire base, basically, probably taken out a third of it on her own. So awesome, awesome Queen walk, awesome plan. These anti-two-star bases, look to do queen walks and look to use Valks. I think that not just for this base, but other anti-two-star bases, they all kind of have a similar uh, a similar layout to them to a certain extent. So right there, uh, one healer does go down to a Seeking Air Mine, but that's the first time that even happened. So people aren't going crazy with their Seeking Air Mines yet to defend against queen walks, and it uh, works out great for Fahim. So hope you guys liked the video. A quick one on what or when to know not to use Stoned Hobo, even though it is very popular. So I hope you guys learned something, and uh, that will help you in your future attacks for those of you Town Hall 9s and possibly even Town Hall 10s out there, but mainly just Town Hall 9s. Uh, I guess so like I said the link in the description for the the new face reveal predictions so that way you guys can uh, if you do win I know like how to contact you which I kind of was stupid and forgot to put in the last one so fill that out again I apologize for the inconvenience and I look forward to seeing what your guys' guesses are. And like I said, the two videos, or the three videos really, to celebrate 10,000 subscribers will come out this weekend. So look forward to that, and look forward to the next few uploads just of regular Clash things over the next few days. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.